This video will show you how to connect NepoSmart to your garage. First, we'll quickly cover certain garage requirements, then we'll move to the actual garage setup. Most garage doors are activated by a button switch like the one you see before you. This type of button is where we'll connect NepoSmart. Refer to the manual if your garage has a screen like this one, and it's not a button-only garage switch. And finally, do not install NepoSmart if your door does not have an electrical eye like this one, or an equivalent safety system that prevents the door from closing when someone or something is in the way. Now onto the actual setup. First, disconnect your garage from electrical power. Now decide on a good place to mount the camera. We chose this section of drywall because it has a good view of the garage and is also near a power outlet. If you're mounting the camera onto drywall, we advise you to use the drywall screws provided, thus ensuring that the bracket stays in place. Now take the bracket and pencil in the holes for the screws. Then screw in the drywall screws into the pencil marks. Then screw in the metal screws. And make sure the mount is properly fastened. You can adjust the angle by twisting the cap, pulling the head down, and then retightening. Now to mount NepoSmart, align the screw hole of the unit to the screw of the bracket and tighten. We'll now move to the garage door switch. Unscrew the screws of the garage switch so that you can expose the back. Your switch might look a little different, so you may have to consult your garage manual or manufacturer for more details. Now take the bell wire with the spade connectors. Then loosen one of the terminals of the garage switch. Fit one of the spade connectors underneath. And retighten the terminal. Do the same thing for the second terminal. Loosen the terminal, fit the spade connector underneath, and retighten. Finally, reattach the garage switch to your wall. The other end of the bell wire will be attached to your NepoSmart, so you need to trace the amount of wire you need, as depicted. Once you get your measurement, cut the wire to length. Now strip the ends of both the red and the white wire, exposing the wire underneath. You will be fitting these two wires in the out port. Now insert one of the wires, it doesn't matter if it's red or white, into one of the holes until the orange lock is pushed in. And do the same for the other wire. Now you can set the NepoSmart aside and we'll move on to the magnetic switch. The magnetic switch has two parts, the sensor and the magnet. You can put the switch anywhere so long as the sensor is at a fixed location and the magnet is on the moving garage door no more than two inches apart from each other. We chose to put them at the top of the garage because it's easier to drill the sensor into the wood. And make sure when the door opens it doesn't hit the sensor. We marked both holes with a pencil so we can drill the screws into the sensor. The magnet has an adhesive at the bottom, so if you chose a part of your garage door that isn't magnetic, you can use that to stick it onto the door. Make sure the surface on which you're sticking the magnet is clean, and make sure that it's not going to fall off, especially when the door moves. Now ensure no wires are dangling by taping or stapling the wires to the wall. We're using staples like these, and tracing the wire that we need along the wall Back to the NepoSmart. Cut the wire to length and strip both of these wires exposing the wire underneath. These two wires are going to go in the import. Notice the other two wires were from the garage switch and these two wires are from your magnetic switch. And just like before, insert the wires into the hole until the orange lock is pushed in. Again, the color order does not matter. At this point, we've completed all the wiring. Simply mount NepoSmart back onto your bracket. 
Then take the AC adapter and plug the cylindrical end into the power port. And plug the other end back to a nearby outlet. And finally, replug your garage power. You have completed the garage setup. Now it's time to configure the app in the next video.